Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering today. We're going to have some fun. We don't have to climb no scaffold. We're doing retaining walls today. And obviously cinder block retaining walls and concrete retainer walls are one of some of the most popular all around the world because we get a lot of calls about them. Anyhow, I want to, I want to explain a few things before we actually show you how to do this stuff. Now, these are form boards. Form boards, they put the boards and they form it and they pour the concrete. This retaining wall goes down two or three feet. It's engineered, it has the rebar in it. It's engineered specifically to hold back the amount of weight. It's a retaining wall to retain all this dirt. Now, I'm going to point something out here because I get a lot of folks who call say, hey Kirk, uh, we got cracks in our retaining walls or cracks in our house. Get used to it, guys. <laughs> See this big crack? See this big crack? See this crack, this crack, this is scaffold boards where they meet, this crack, this crack here. And by the way, while we're looking at it, you see this wall somewhat wavy? No worries, we're going to get some of that out, not all of it. And we've got big cracks every which where. The way we're going to do this is this wall already was pressure washed, and it wasn't pressure washed with an electric pressure washer. Electric pressure washer has about 1,400 PSI strength. It's useless for this kind of stuff. A gas-powered pressure washer was used because we want at least 3,000 psi strength to get this. We want to micro-score it, micro-etch it. We want to score this like if it's wire brush. You can't see it, but if you had a, a microscope, you could see it's it's it's. Uh, we want to make it more porous so that the next finish which we're mixing right now, they absorb by suction. And right here, where they put oil on the form boards in order for the uh, concrete not to adhere, we put a little bit of a bonding agent over that because we've got to fill this up and make it really adhere well. Um, anyhow, hey, spider. Uh, okay, getting off of that. Get carried away, guys. Let me explain something else, too, uh, folks. This retaining wall, if done properly, should have a French drain system. The water, and it, I mean, we're talking mountains here. How much water is going to come down here? 100 tons? More? 200 tons? I don't know. But the water comes here, down this mountain. If there was no French drain here, it would push this right here because there's no buttresses. Buttresses is a piece that comes this way to really hold this intact. But it's just a retaining wall. It goes way down. So the water comes here, hits the French drain, goes all the way out. Woo, look at this wall, how wavy it is. That's what you call a blowout when they did the forms. The weight of this blew it out a little bit. So we're going to fix that too. But anyway, the, wa the water comes here and goes, and it goes all the way out to the bottom there. And that's what relieves some of the tension. But is it going to relieve all of it? Well, those stress cracks show no, because this was just built less than a year ago. So the pressure washing is done. Now we're going to skim coat it. How thick do you need to skim coat a concrete or even a cinder block wall so that when it rains you don't see the grout lines? Minimum half inch. We're going to go an inch in some areas. I'm going to show you the back of this truck. I'm going to walk around here, Jay. Um, now the back of this truck, you see this retaining wall goes all the way down to a wee bit like that, about two inches, and it goes to the four foot to five here. All this sand here, there's about two yards, 4,000 pounds. We're going to use it all today. And we're using Eisenwall. What is Eisenwall? They, they sell this at the material yards. You're not going to find Eisenwall at any of the uh, hardware stores. Why? Because you need a, well, you used to need a certification to purchase it, which I had about 15 years ago. Eisenwall is a white cement, just like Lehigh Hansen's makes a white cement. But this Eisenwall is designed for bridges. Rapid Set makes Eisenwall. Rapid Set also makes all the products you, sell, you see at Home Depot and Lowe's. It's called Rapid Set. It comes in 25 pound boxes, 10, 50 pound bags, 100 pound bags. These are 100 pound bags, or 94 to be exact. And with Eisenwall, Rapid Set, or any of the same day products that you can go, say, this particular one you can go six inches thick. Are we going six inches thick here? Not really. 
we're going to go about an inch, some, some areas two inches to fix it. But Rapid said, or Eisenwall, you can go six inches thick back to back to back to back. And they also say it's crack free. Well, you've seen that retaining wall. That's got cracked. Everything, everybody says everything is crack free. If it's suspended in midair, it's crack free. If it's on a wall and that wall moves, it is not crack free because the weight of the water cracked this. The weight of a lot of rain will lift the house and when drier conditions occur, it'll settle. That will crack it. So there's no such thing as a crack free stucco or concrete. It's nonsense. But anyhow, getting back to this Eisen wall. Why are we using Eisen wall on here? Well, I told them we, we could use uh, Lehigh's white cement. This is, this is uh, cement we generally use, guys. And this is, uh, it's an all-purpose plastering cement. And when I call it cement, we call it cement plaster, muck, mud, mortar, stucco. It all means the same thing. Lehigh's makes, Lee, Hansen's Lehigh's also makes a white cement. And that's about 15 bucks a bag. And that's not, that's quite different from this here. That's about 60 bucks a bag. So this one costs so much because it's so strong and you can go coat after coat after coat. But if you guys don't want to spend that kind of dough, well then buy the Lehigh's white cement. And the reason is we want to get that color. Now look at the house, it's a tan. The color of the cement, as I said a little while ago, is dictated by the sand. So if these bags right here of Eisenwall are white and the sand is brown, that's going to make a tan finish. Why are we going to do that? Because a tan finish on this wall will be maintenance free for hundreds of years. Will it hairline crack? I always got to bring that back because folks always call me and many, many other plasters call me and say, Kirk, I'm glad you tell homeowners that we can and will get hairline cracks on some of the properties we do because we got a crack and we got a phone call saying we did something wrong. Nature does most of that, but I won't get into that. I've done enough videos on on why houses crack, retaining walls crack. So giving you a little bit of uh, uh, tips here on things. We are going to get started now and we're going to start by, uh, we're going to start at the top here and work our way all the way down this. So when my brother Lou gets the mix going, I want to point something else out guys. See inside here. Ugh. All right, that's Eisenwall. Why are those blades not running? Those, we mix Eisenwall three minutes. You turn those blades off because if you mix it more than three to five minutes, all the same day materials or all of the scratch and brown same day back to back materials, you cannot over mix them. Why? You jack up the integrity of the strength. I'll leave it at that, guys. Uh, Westside said, they should sell a stopwatch with this stuff because three minutes is the max. How we do it, and I'm not telling you folks ever to use Eisenwall because you could better have 20 years in to try to learn how to use this material. If we didn't have retardants in this, we take lunch, this hardens 4,000 PSI strength, we throw the mixer away. It's that hard and that strong. So you've got to know what you're doing when you're using Eisenwall. Anyhow, we're going to get started. With Okay guys, we come to the difficult part now, trying to show you guys what we're doing while doing it. Jay and Nathan are putting it on and I'm darving behind them. We're all doing a little of everything. This has got a, a half inch to a, a three quarters of an inch, some places an inch. And what they do is once they put it on, I take this sponge float. Now this is called a green sponge float. And yes, this brings out the aggregate or sand. Same thing, same thing. This is sand aggregate. So what I'm doing is I'm giving it a float finish and I'm bringing the sand out because this is going to be the finished coat. And when this dries, it's going to be a lot lighter, somewhat of a tan color uh, because we're using a white cement and then the sand is uh, brown. So it'll, it'll give a tan. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to jump ahead of myself and go over here with Nathan. I'll show you guys a few things. Okay, right here we got an inch. I scratched that because when we come back around here to get this radius and get some of these humps out, we have to have that filled first. That's the beauty of using Eisenwall. So, all right. Now, Nathan over here, my brother from uh, another mother, uh, what we're doing basically is we're just putting on this coat here. I'm taking, I'm taking Jay's job now because these are his tools. He's spreading but he hasn't learned yet to spread and film. 
So what we're doing basically is we're putting on a little bit more. Fill that board up, Lou, because you know I don't mess around. All right. What I do, guys, is I'm taking it up because after I take it up, I want to shave this top. Nathan and I are kind of in each other's way, but not the first time. Won't be the last time. I'm going to take it just a little further, guys, so you get an idea how this is done. Ah, okay, we're stepping over each other, but that's okay. See, I take it up. I take it up, and then I get it to this top here. We're not doing the cap, but we are trying to make the top look good, too. So, we put it on. And by the way, guys, see that? Don't try to use a trowel. I stole this from the Silver Surfer. It's a surfboard. All right. Cool beans, Lou. Okay. And since we're, we're hauling, putting it on, the sun actually isn't out right now. It's supposed to be 100 degrees in a little while. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And big humps like this, we go right over it, put a little extra mud. I'll show you another thing what I'm doing too is we're darbying it. Meaning I'll take the rod, this guy that's in my way, and make it make it a little prettier, guys. See you can put it on ugly if you want, fat and ugly. I like it fat and ugly. Why do I like it fat and ugly? Because you can move it around with the rod. If it's real tight, I mean skin tight, uh, real tight, then it'll be too dry and I won't be able to move it with the Darby or rod. You call it Darby or rod. So we take it. We keep going. I'm doing the tops because Nathan's doing a lot of the bottoms because he's a, he's a spring chicken so he can bend down. <laughs> All right. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do one more or two more hawkfuls, and then I'm gonna uh, take the derby and make it pretty. All right. All right. Make it fat and ugly. Fat and ugly. Okay. Fat and ugly. That means now I take this derby here. Excuse me, guys. We wet the derby. If dry derby won't do anything except pull the stucco off the wall. So always wet your Darby. Never use a dry, a dry Darby. Don't do that. Okay, here's what I do now. Now we're starting here. I'm going to have to let this set another half hour, 15 minutes, because we have two bags of retardant in this. Now basically what I'm doing is pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. Pulling it up. What's up, buddy? Coming at you. Coming at you. If I really want to get fancy, I can take it this way. And next, you'll find me doing exactly where I left off, which is floating. I'm going to grab my float. And guys, if you do this yourself, nothing better than at the end of the day, and looking back and seeing a job well done, you will sleep well. This gives a lot of oxygen. I love doing this stuff because I sleep so well at night. A lot of water, we bring out the aggregate again. And there's a lot of ways to do this, guys. If one person's doing it all by himself, good luck. This is teamwork. Without a good hog carrier, say like my brother, Lou. And guys, to help put it on, you'll be spinning your wheels, guys. It's uh, too difficult to task for one man. This is like football or baseball. It's a team, a team sport. One guy mixes, one guy floats, puts it on. The other guy darbies, and we all help each other. If, if, I, if I'm doing this, they're doing that. We all know what needs to be done and when to stop doing something to help the next person. 
but that's uh, another story. Anyway, you see where this is going. What we want to do is continue going halfway down, maybe the whole thing. And we just wanted to give you an idea. Maybe when we come back to do this intricate stuff, we'll show that. Maybe not. Anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, guys, now what you, what you don't see is if we make a couple mistakes or something falls down because it's got too much water, then just give it some time. Keep doing what you're doing and come back to it. This fell down, so I just put some mud on it and I come back to it. That's all. Uh, you can't put mud on perfectly every single time. Nobody can do that. Uh, we're far from it, too. So anyway... Uh, we're going to take it all the way down and notice we're going the further we get the easier it is because we're going down to two inches so we're going to continue doing this I'm right following you Nathan following you right. okay guys with this Eisenwald product it finally turned tan right now it's, it's drying up that's an inch thick what I did was I made a, a little mistake and right where you're at Jay with this product you always have to miss the walls too you missed before and you missed after for the mechanical bond now when we first got here it was about seven o'clock in the morning and these I thought it was going to turn out to be about 90 degrees it's only about 70 degrees so I called this wrong we put two bags of retardant in when I didn't need any retardant why because this wall was cold it was 40 degrees last night so the whole wall was cold but I thought at eight, 8 or 9 it was going to be at 95 degrees. So it took forever for this to dry. And what do we do while we wait? We continue to spread the whole wall. So now we're at the tail end. And we just have this area left right here to do. All right. What we're doing is putting the last coat on here. When I first got here, I was showing the homeowner. I said, gee, you know, we could fix that. And he said, fix what? And I said, well where the radius dips everywhere he says you know i'd never noticed that till you pointed it out i said well i have to point it out and we have to fix it because i don't feel right leaving it anyhow what we're doing is we're taking this radius and we're fixing it why because we can boom and what we're going to do now nathan and i and jay we're just going to finish spreading this out and We'll show you the very end when we're all done. Okay, guys, remember if you're going to use a rapid set or a Eisenwall, wall, you got to hose it down. You got to hydrate it. Uh, there you have it. You can see how everything is done. It looks beautiful. It's all cleaned up. Nathan, my first officer, we'll see you on the next one. Live long and plaster, guys. Kirk out. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments.
If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.